Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Street Fighter Sakura figure, which I kind of forgot was coming out, but I have to tell you, I'm very happy that it did. You know this Street Fighter line, actually Street Fighter figures in general are some of my favorite things ever. I quite like Street Fighter stuff. And this SH Figure Arts line has been kind of hit or miss. There have been some good things and some bad things. And it's, just, it's kind of disappointing in some cases. But I'm very happy to tell you that this figure kind of makes all that go away. It's really well done. It's not 100% perfect, but it does some things exceptionally well. And most of the other things really well. So I, I'm very happy to be showing it to you. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about five and three quarter inches, just above that if you count the top of her hair, which makes her really close to 14 and a half centimeters, which is really close to 112 scale. And I didn't realize it until just the other day when I was looking at this figure, these figures are actually really darn close to almost exactly 112 scale, which is kind of good. I mean, it's really good. Unfortunately, most of our 112 scale figures are oversized. Uh, like Marvel Legends or DCUC, for instance, those are all too big. Uh, but the 112 scale Street Fighter figures, which are most important, being the Soda ones, they're actually really close to 112 scale, like accurately. And so here's a quick comparison. I have my old Sakura, or Sakura. Uh, I grew up calling her Sakura, and I know it's not accurate, but I don't say her name enough uh, to have corrected myself habitually. I did for Ryu, obviously, but Sakura sometimes still comes out as Sakura. Anyway, here's the Soda one versus the the new one. In fact, the soda one's a little bit shorter, probably more accurate, since she's supposed to be like 5'1", I think. It says on the box, I don't quite remember. So this one's even a little bit bigger. So scaling, I don't know, I think it's okay. I think you can definitely get by mixing and matching. Now let me set that aside before I mess it up. That's the special one. And then just in case you're curious about looking at Ryu versus Sakura, it's definitely close enough to scale. I mean, it's definitely gonna be good enough which makes me very happy. Uh, now as far as accessories go, these guys aren't known for coming with a bunch of them, but it, they kind of have enough. She's got the two fist hands that come on her in the package and then two style pose hands. And then she has three different faces. We have the neutral smiley face, we have the open mouth smiley face, and then we have the open mouth yelling face. And they all look pretty good. Uh, this line does have kind of an anime look to it, and unfortunately it works better on Sakura than Ryu. Ryu's face looks a little bit weird. Sakura's looks much better, I think, but that's more of a subjective thing, so you can decide for yourself what you like. Uh, anyway, the new faces do look good. And then we do have her fireball, which is done really nicely. It's really nice translucent blue plastic with some paint shading and lots of sculpt work and a little stand for it. So that's nice. And then we do have these guys. Again, we're still getting these paper backgrounds, which was a really cool idea at first. Uh, it, they've been starting to jam them in the packaging such that they get wrinkled up and bent. And these do have a significant bend in them, or at least a warp. Uh, so th that's not as bad as some of them, but it's not great. If you're going to have this kind of thing, it needs to be flat. Uh, they've been folding them up and tucking them inside the clear, the, the plastic part of the packaging. So they're going like this and wedging them in there when they should just be flat on the card in the back. But the print work is okay. It's, it's exactly as pixelated as the uh, in-game version, so that's okay. And, and it's nice. It's fine. I like the idea. I have no opportunity to use these things. They're too dang big. And they don't stand up very well because they're warped, so I don't use them. But it's still kind of a nice touch. Alright, so now let's talk about the paint on the figure. How is it? It's really good. There's shading throughout. There's some shading on the blue. There's some shading on the skin tones. And then there's lots of detailed paint work. Not a ton of shading, but it is there. There's shading in the hair, by the way, too. It's very, very crisp and clean. You can see these white and blue lines for her sleeves and her collar. Very, very nicely done. The, the scarf is painted nicely. Her gloves are painted nicely. Her shoes are painted nicely. Just very all-around, well-executed figure. The shading on the skirt definitely gives a nice look to it. I found that you don't need that much shading. If you put it in the right places, it draws the eye where it needs to draw it, and it looks good. And then, of course, the shading on the skin makes a big difference, too, because skin tends to look a lot better with just a little bit of shading on it. Maybe that's just me, but I've always thought that. All right, so as far as articulation goes, her head has... Well, let's start with the neck, actually. The neck is a cool feature because it's all the way down. It's all that, that whole red piece, but it's on a ball peg, and it moves around. Not a ton, but it does move, so that helps a little bit. And then there's a ball hinge for her neck. So there's a hinge going for forward and back like that. And then it pegs in uh, horizontally. There's a straight peg that lets the head rock side to side. And then, of course, it, it, it rotates around on a straight peg in the neck as well. So it's not the best design, honestly. It's the best use of a ball hinge for a neck, no doubt. 
but uh, a regular ball peg would be sufficient, which is what most of these figures have, the Street Fighter ones. But it's definitely effective. It looks up and down fine, side to side, it's pretty good. The way they've done it is a good way of doing it. The headband is on its own little ball hinge, which is nice. You do have to be careful, though, because as you can see, the soft part is actually part of the hinge. So if you go like this, you're actually separating the hinge, and if you go like this, you could separate it that way, too. So you have to be extra careful as you're moving it. If you can, reach in there with your fingernails and kind of try to rotate the ball itself, the ball part. But I do like that they articulated that. I don't know why they did a ball hinge instead of just a ball peg. I mean, technically a ball hinge in this case has a better opportunity for range, but that's that's complex and risky. So just be careful. You don't want to break that. But it's nice that they did it, that they did it. For the shoulders, we have a ball peg where the body where the shoulder connects to the body, and then we have our ball hinge right there. Then this is just kind of sitting on top. But the way it works, it gets in the way a little bit. It's not as bad as some of the figures we've seen, like Akuma, for instance. So you can still get her arm out horizontally, so that's fine. It's okay. It's not the best. It would have been so much better if it would actually worked into the top of the shoulder. I'd much rather be able to see the joint and use it than not see it and be encumbered by the sculpt. But on this one, it's a decent balance. It's a fair trade-off, so I'll, I'll take it. Full rotation. Bicep swivel's okay. We also get one down here which is technically not another one down here. It's actually just rotating and this is just sitting on top. So when you rotate this, it's rotating this. When you don't rotate this, it's still just rotating the same way. But you do have some opportunity to pose it better, so that's kind of nice. Single jointed elbow, a little bit better than 90 degrees. Ball hinge for the wrists, not bad, it's okay. Torso has a ball peg, which is kind of a weird thing the way they've done it, but as far as I can tell, there's a ball peg that goes up from down here up to here. And so you can move it around, move the torso around on that fleshy part, which is her lower torso. And this is just a softer plastic, so it kind of flexes. I'm not really sure why they bothered to put that split in there. They probably didn't need to. I guess they just did it to not have it come all the way back up here. It, it, either way, it works fine. I, I could spend more time talking about the engineering and why they probably did it, but it doesn't really matter. It works, and it's not ugly, so that's okay. Mine does have some weird scuffing going on under the torso, which is weird because it's just the white plastic... Maybe it's just like some factory grime, and it'll come off. Yeah, I think it did, mostly. All right, good. So then we have that, and then we also have a ball peg at the lower torso for the crotch area. So you can move the entire upper body there, which is really good. Skirt is a soft material, and you can see it's split on the sides to afford good range. And then she has the floating crotch piece of red undies. And then we have the same type of hips as Chun-Li, which work really nicely. She can kick basically all the way forward, all the way up, so forward splits, and then the side splits, which are even better because of the way they designed it. It's basically hiding the articulation completely. So as long as you take her out to dinner, you're going to be very pleased with the range in the hips on this figure. Very nicely done. Um, I almost said uh, Hasbro. It's not Hasbro, it is Bandai. Tamashi Nations. And then we have our single jointed knee, which is not the worst we've seen. I've seen way worse. It's not the best we've seen, but it'll do. It's okay, you get decent range, and it doesn't look terrible. But here's one of the things that I like the most about this figure. The ankle joint is particularly unique. You do get rotation here because you can see there's a hinge inside. Hopefully you can see that. There's a regular ball hinge in there. So it's technically called a uh, universal hinge, if you want to call it that. So that means it pegs into the ankle and can rotate, and it pegs into the foot and can rotate. But it rotates there on the ankle. Then you have your hinge here, which actually spreads apart the top of the shoe like a real shoe would, and, and you get really good forward range, surprisingly good range. And then going back, there's another split, which lets it go back really far, which is very, very nice. And then you have a rotation down here for your ankle rocker, which is like a true ankle rocker, not a swivel hinge an ankle rocker very very nicely done and then there's more there's a toe hinge and they did it the way i've been saying toe hinges need to be done since forever since i've been knowing about figures i've been saying why is the hinge always only a fraction of the thickness of the foot and then you end up with big gaps when you bend it now this one does have a little bit of a lip down here at the very very bottom but you can see the hinge is almost the entire thickness of the foot and so when you use that toe hinge it doesn't totally destroy the sculpt there's no huge gapping at the bottom and it's very nicely done it's very well executed they did sculpt the bottom of the feet by the way yeah there's like i mean there are a few things obviously that could be better like maybe not having this the shirt hiding the shoulder joint which limits the range but it does hide the joint so i can excuse that you know it's very very well executed it's easily the best figure of the street fighter bunch by far it's it's just all around exactly what it should be 
given the price points relatively low could it be better in some cases yes does it need to be no i don't think so i think anybody that buys this is going to be more than satisfied with how it turned out very pleased with it and i think you guys will be too so thanks for watching guys if you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up i would really appreciate that and if you haven't subscribed you might want to do that because i do have new videos up every single day we talk about action figures movies talk about tv shows we do sculpting and live streaming we just do all kinds of fun stuff so make sure you come back for that turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of that and in the meantime keep collecting